Hi everyone, I'm Dina and I'm no ordinary biologist. I'm sporting the NUS top, as you can see, for the occasion. If you don't know who I am, I'm 23, I'm an environmental biologist from the UK. Today I'd like to give you an overview of my time as an exchange student at the National University of Singapore. I lived in Singapore for a full year during the 2017-2018 academic year. So I guess I've been sitting on this footage for about three years now. That's how busy I've been, or lazy. So what I plan to do is show you some footage of the campus, kind of talk you through what's there and what's not there, tell you about some of the activities that um, I did while I was there, and then I'm going to talk about the modules and the workload at NUS. And then finally, I'm going to do a bit of a Q&A of some common questions that I've been asked as a student ambassador for those that are incoming. I know that quite a lot of things might have changed since I went because of the pandemic and whatnot, but. I think it's so useful to have since I didn't really have this when I was applying to NUS. NUS campus is super green and modern and it pretty much has everything that you might need while you're there. The main hub is University Town. In U Town there was a bunch of facilities like lecture theatres, canteens, an infinity pool, dance studio, gym shops and study spaces. Yep, you heard me right, NUS has an infinity pool. The facilities are insane. I mean, I was lucky to get a quick dip in a rain puddle at Sheffield. <laughs> and you wish you've got that beautiful swimming pool. Yeah, they actually have three swimming pools. Maybe they have more now since I've left. And this is one of the main canteens at U Town where I pretty much ate every day. So most of the international students stayed um, in the ta in the U Town towers. Um, and it's called U-Town Residence. I think you have three or four beds in a shared flat. So you have a, a shared kitchen, a shared living room, um, shared bathroom. But that's the, the main place that people wanted to stay because it was kind of like your own little apartment building and you had your own space. And there was a really limited number of places. So I actually didn't get allocated a place. Um, so I ended up in a residential college and it was probably the college that made my experience there and I would thoroughly recommend to stay in a, in a residential college just because you get so much more interaction with the locals. Um, I stayed at RC4 which is res residential college 4 and I loved it there. It was so good. They put on activities for you which is so fun and similar to say like a, a UK university they have uh, societies and there's a little society fair at the start of the year that you can go to, um, which you wouldn't really get that community vibe in the U-Town Towers. So I was able to join an environmental group, I was able to join a tennis team, and that was all through um, the residential college. support within um, the residential college so there was RAs which would kind of check in on you every now and then um, and they also put on little activities for the exchange students that were there so for example they did this little little thing called Pidgeo and Pidgeato where they'd leave little notes outside your door sometimes they left presents I got chocolates I got local sweets um, and it was just really good to be able to connect with some of the locals and some of the people that were living there. We also decorated our doors with chalk and everyone did that together um, on the floor, which was really nice. I definitely think the benefits of living in the residential college overrode the negatives. I was able to play tennis for the intramural games. The residential colleges put on fancy balls that we attended where we got dressed up and had lovely food. I was also able to learn some martial arts. 
and do a bit of diving and I'm going to do a separate video um, of my dive trip to Malaysia. So I studied in the life sciences department and I mainly did ecology and conservation modules. The course there is amazing. You get to kind of dive straight into the tropical rainforest and you get to trudge through um, intertidal marine environments. And it's actually the place that got me into biodiversity and conservation. Um, before I was unsure what direction I wanted to go in within biology and this secured my path almost. I did four modules per semester. They were a mixture of level two, level three and level four modules. I got to do some really cool lab work which was in the marine modules and also the environmental animal physiology module. A really cool module that I did was the entomology module and I was actually scared of insects before I did this module and that's the reason why I took it. And it was amazing, we got to create an insect project for the museum at the university. My favourite modules were definitely the marine and aquatic modules because we got to do crazy trips, we went to the aquariums, we went to beautiful coastlines across Singapore. Uh, my favourite field trip was probably Sister Island Marine Park where we got to see all the crazy creatures of the intertidal. I wanted to do a bit of a Q&A. I often had a bunch of questions from people, so I just picked kind of like five or six of the most common questions that I got. Now, probably one of the main things that people ask me is, was it hard to make friends? Um, so I had a very mixed experience with making friends, and I'm usually quite a sociable person. I'm an extrovert, um, so I get my energy from other people. First semester was not that great for me. I actually kind of ruined my experience because I really struggled to make friends. I kind of thought I was too good to go to the international parties and all of the events that the university put on which was a massive mistake go to those events that's where you meet most of your friends and i guess i never really had to make friends outside of my hometown or outside of my university at home I kind of thought friendships would kind of develop organically without me having to push them which it wasn't the case at all you have to really put yourself out there um, and meet a bunch of different people before you find kind of find the crowd that works for you. I didn't do that in first semester. I stuck to one or two people and it didn't work out very well. I was really, really lonely for the first four months of my exchange. Fast forward to after Christmas, completely different story. I made sure I went to all of the events. I completely changed my mindset. I was really positive about meeting people. I joined so many groups and societies. I went on so many trips and it was amazing. The best time ever and I still have um, really close friends that I met over there that I keep in contact with. In conclusion, it's hard to make friends if you make it hard for yourself to make friends, if that makes sense. Really go out there and try and meet people, but also be yourself. Don't try and be superficial or whatever. Okay, question number two. How did you afford to go? Obviously going on exchange halfway around the world is not cheap. And I'm lucky enough to have supportive parents to help me. However, having said that, I didn't want to fully rely on my parents because I felt it wasn't very fair. So I applied for a couple of grants and scholarships and I actually won the um, Duo Exchange Scholarship. I'll link that down below if it's still running. That was roughly about £4,000 that I won um, to fund my year. But not gonna lie, £4,000 wasn't enough. I mean, the flight alone was a thousand. That's a quarter of that grant gone already. I kind of went all out because I knew that it was a once in a lifetime opportunity and I made sure that I went on all the trips and I bought all the food and I had an amazing time, but obviously I have, I'm so grateful to be able to do that because of the support from, mainly because of the support from my parents. I know that many, many people out there are not gonna have that, um, that support system. I'd recommend to save during your first and second year if your exchange is third year. However, there are grants, and like I said, the scholarships that are available to you. I think if you contact your um, global opportunities department within your university, I'm sure they have a bunch of funding opportunities that you'd be able to apply to. I think there's also a thing that you can apply to where you get reimbursed for all your travel throughout the whole year. I know there was a thing at Sheffield. And I would just like to note that you can't work legally on a student visa over in Singapore. It is going to be difficult for you to earn money unless, you know, 
and you go and do a little job that pays cash, which isn't technically allowed. So maybe don't do that. Okay, number three. Which accommodation is the best to stay at at NUS? Already touched on this a little bit within the video, but I definitely recommend joining a residential college. PGP is avoid at all costs. U-Town is in the middle, you get a lot more privacy. Um, but if you want that community vibe, definitely a residential college. Okay, number four, how was the food? Epic. Oh, the food. Disclaimer, this was before I was a vegetarian. I didn't really have a bias towards what kind of food I was eating, I was eating anything. I think Singapore's one of the places that's so diverse, so you can get Indian, you can get Chinese, you can get Malaysian food, you can get Korean food, you can get any kind of food you want, and it's pretty much bang on. Whereas if you try and get a Chinese takeout in the UK, it is an English Chinese takeout. Over there, it's all pretty traditional. You can get a Sunday roast if you want to, at a pub. It might not be as good as your mum's, but you can get one. And it's also cheap because a lot of people eat out in Singapore rather than cooking in. So you go to hawker centres, which are like big canteens, and there's loads of them dotted around the city. And you can get a full meal for like $2. It's really good food, it's not crap. If you're a foodie, you're gonna enjoy Singapore. What are we on now, five? Five. Did I do a placement? I did do a placement. So after I finished my academic year, I decided that I wanted to stay a bit longer because I loved it. I did a placement at the zoo, Singapore Zoo, and it was amazing. I mean, it's like it's like the dream place to work for a biologist, really, isn't it? Tropical zoo, fantastic. The logistics behind that were also quite difficult. You had to get another visa, a working visa, to do that. Even though I was doing it voluntarily, I still had to get a working visa to stay in the country, and I had to find a place to live which is a lot more expensive than living on campus because campus accommodation is pretty, it's subsidised, so it's pretty cheap. And if you're trying to find accommodation outside of the uni and trying to live somewhere in Central that's accessible, my placement was quite in the north, and but I wanted to stay connected to the main central area. That was expensive. I got an Airbnb for a whole month, like a long-term stay. And yet I couldn't have stayed there without the support of my parents at all. So that's something you have to consider if you do decide to do a placement. However, I did gain so many skills and meet so many great contacts. I got to microchip pythons. I got to look after pangolins. Pangolins are very cute, by the way. I'll put a picture in. Okay, sixth and final question. How was the workload? Hard. Very hard. You really have to work hard. I worked my ass off to get the grades that I did. But I also did a lot of traveling and did a lot of socializing as well. So it's a, it's a really fine balance. And I'm so glad I did because I didn't want to be stuck in the library the whole time while I was over there because life's too short. But at NUS you're on a bell curve, so you're in competition with everyone else. For example, like the top 5% were the ones that got A pluses and so on going down. So it wasn't like you scored so well on a test and you got a grade just from that score. You were compared to everyone else. And that made the working environment quite competitive and sometimes quite cold. If you'd asked for some help from a, a, a fellow student in the class, they be really reluctant to help you because they don't want you to do better than them. And I did find that quite alien, I guess, because everyone's really friendly at home and we all kind of help each other and, and moan about the work together. And I really had to be confident in myself um, while doing exams and coursework because people wouldn't really, weren't that open to help. It was really hard, yeah. Um, I actually did really well but I did work hard. It is a lot more difficult o over there than in the Sheffield. And we're done! I hope you enjoyed that overview of my time in Singapore and I hope some people actually get to go in the future, I guess. I don't know how what the exchange programs are doing now, but... And I'm gonna focus on a, the more touristy sides of Singapore in a different video, which I'll link somewhere when I've got it done. Don't forget to like and subscribe, because that's what people do on YouTube. See you later.